it's our last episode. We left us the Pona and we made it down to Almirma. So that's just a little bit further along the Crossville Sol. And this week is all about this. This is a bowsprit. In fact, she's a carbon bowsprit. So a bowsprit, for those of you who don't know, goes on the front of the boat. It basically sticks out in front of it and gives us another place to hang a sail from. So we can hang the likes of cruising chutes or asymmetric spinnakers. Code zeros, all that kind of thing off the front. But we're not going to go into that today. Today is all about how we're going to fit it and how you might fit one to your boat. Deep Blue Dirt, a sailboat expedition to allow us to ride the entire planet. So to mount this bad boy on the bow, uh, it's pretty simple. We've got a, a ring right on the bow and a pad eye on the deck here. So six holes, pretty simple, right? But there's definitely some things to consider when you're doing this. All right, so the bow ring, just three bolts, three M8s, and then a Torx bit M10 that goes right through the middle. This is an interesting thing. It's off center as well. So this means that you can, push the, the ring either left or the right it's, you can leave it loose as well and the other thing is you've got a, a grub screw in here which allows you to tension that up against the head of this M10 which will prevent movement at all if you want it in a fixed place all the time and this fella just clips in and will always leave you access to the Torx bit when you need it so starting with the bow ring we've got three bolts three M8s to be exact and they're gonna go somewhere on the bow of the boat but we want to try and get as much power out of the pole as you possibly can and you want to get as much strength out of the whole setup as you can as well so some things to bear in mind are when you get your pole you'll be given a maximum unsupported length that's determined by your boat weight, your boat length and also the size of the sail area and the power that the boat can produce so this maximum length that this is allowed to stick out unsupported which is measured from the last point of contact to the boat which is the bow ring itself we want to keep that area as long as possible to get as much power out of the boat as we can really as far forward on the stem head is quite a good place to put that or as far forward as you can get it so that gives you the most power out of the boat but it also has a second benefit this is probably one of the strongest parts on any boat you've got the hull coming together and you've also got the deck on top now on this boat, we've got about an inch of fiberglass solid with no core and again, the front of the boat, an inch of fiberglass thick solid with no core again. So that's glassed together, it's super strong and basically that's going nowhere. On some boats, you might have a bit of a thinner makeup, you know, like race boats and things like that. You might find that it's a little bit more Flick, like flimsy up front so you might have to beef that up with fiberglass and epoxy let's say to strengthen that up or put a pad underneath and I would suggest that you glass that in too onto the hulls either side of the hull for strength but basically as far forward as you can get it and make sure it's damn strong because that's under a huge amount of tension when that huge spinnaker or great big sail let's say fills up so in the aft part of the pole we've got a pad eye fitment this is the basic pad eye it clips together like that and that's what bolts in it's a straightforward thing we've all seen pad eyes and some of them have this lovely rubber thing here which can help towards galvanic corrosion i suppose i wouldn't trust it but there's that but it also holds this up with a bit of friction this is a this is a wishard one this is a seldom pole you guessed it they're not compatible the loop is deeper on the seldon so you got to get a seldom one or grind off the top, then it would fit. But there ain't that much material there, so we'll be getting a sound one. The pad eye again is just three M6s drilled straight into the hole. Now, this is the opposite of the bow ring. So the bow ring is in tension being pulled, this one has been pushing the compression. But the same things matter. What we've got to think about here is compression in the deck. So if your deck is a bit thin, you need to start thinking about how you're going to 
increase the strength to that to make sure you've got some good strength in the deck. And ideally, if, if possible, which I would suggest you always do, you deflect that energy going down onto a bulkhead. Now, if you can't put this within an inch of a bulkhead, it's probably a good idea to start putting a webbing in to take that stress from the deck straight down to a bulkhead, the structure. And then that is then dissipated throughout both sides of the hull, not so much the deck, which is really quite important. The only other things to think about with both of these setups, both the bow ring and the bad eye, as things such like as your hull makeup, you might have an aluminium hull, or you might have a raised boat which is real thin, and you might need to think about that. So if you've got a cord hull, so that means there's a foam in there, you might have a balsa core, you've got balsa wood in there. What you don't want is any water ever getting into there. You could just seek flex it. But again, when you bolt this up, you're going to be taking the top layer and the bottom layer, squashing them together. It's not good. Anyway, we'll show you how we get around that. Regarding aluminium boats and the stuff, you got to think about galvanic corrosion and when you put stainless and aluminium together for those who don't know you end up with a, a basic an electrical activity which is then speeded up dramatically by adding an electrolyte otherwise known as seawater and you don't want that so you need to think of a way of insulating the two materials away from each other anyway once you've taken those facts into consideration it literally is just six holes I'm not going to teach you how to drill six holes, but I will show you how we did our six holes. probably wondering why Chris has just filled the holes that he's just drilled for the nut and bolts. Well in simple terms the deck is like a sandwich construction. You've got a layer of GRP, a layer of foam core and then a layer of GRP so it's like a sandwich construction and if we just drilled the holes and put the, the bolts in there's risk of water ingress and we'll end up with a soggy sandwich. No one likes a soggy sandwich. So we have filled it with epoxy and chop strand fiberglass to basically protect that foam core again. Uh, just mind the, the sheet there. And uh, so when we re-drill it to position this bad boy, then we have protected the foam core. Let's get drilling. Bit of glue, belt and braces. We now have a carbon bowsprit fitted. Pretty simple, really. So it's fed in through the bow ring and secured here on the pad eye. And so now we have got to think about stowing it because um, when we're not flying an asymmetric or code zero, we're going to stow it on the deck somewhere. So I'm just going to whip it off. Actually, before uh, I go into the stowage, I'm going to talk to you about um, preventing galvanic corrosion in, in, in this sort of uh, moving part. I would recommend to use Tef gel. This is uh, what prevents galvanic corrosion, but it can also be used as a lubricant um, in seawater sort of um, conditions. So uh, I'm quickly going to pop some with a little brush on this uh, moving pin here and make sure I get the side as well. Okay, that's enough tech gel. Okay, so we've got that protected. So, uh, now we need to think about stowing it. And so, Chris has already laid up um, a couple of uh, carbon fiber sort of cradles for the bowsprit. So, basically, pops on like this. And the idea is, that we're going to position them on the deck by the tow rail so we literally pull the bowsprit out and position it into the cradles <laughs> but now that it's sort of in practice um, I realise that it would be a lot better to not have to 
fully detached the bow sprit from, from the bow essentially because this boat is amazing but because she's only 32 feet in any sort of swell it does get pretty rolly up here and I kind of want to be holding on uh, with one hand whilst I do it so uh, Chris's cogs are turning and we're heading back to the workshop to try and think of an alternative solution that allows us to um, always have the bow sprit attached to the boat. All right, so we're back in the workshop. I've got the original storage cradle I made from carbon, and I'm gonna try and modify this to see if I can make it a little bit better. The idea is to put it behind the original bow ring, the stainless one that holds the bow sprit, and uh, allow this to rotate so we can store the back end of the pole on the tow rail. So we'll see what's happening. I'm just gonna lay up some more carbon to then create an area where I can create a swivel on this nicely. So, got an old chopping board here, got some off cuts of carbon. Uh, we're just going to do a basic wet layup. Alright, so we're fresh in the workshop, half the press for the old uh, carbon shoe. So I'm going to go and put this on the deck now and hopefully we'll, we'll see if it works. The plan is to drill a small pilot hole, a tiny, tiny little self-tapper, and see if it works, see if it's in the right place, and if it all works out, we'll over-drill it with the right size hole and nut and bolt it so she's there for good. Check it out. Check it out, I am so stoked. Chris has done such a good job with this carbon fibre layup and I can now stow the bow sprit with one hand. Let me show you. What a laugh! <laughs> oh, I cannot wait to get out in the water and uh, get sailing with this bow sprit. And not only that, we're going to make an episode for you explaining what a bow sprit is for the benefits of it and how we use it. See you in the water!